Hey gang, it's your sweet Uncle Fluffy. I'm here to tell you all about tips for the Carnival Cruise Lines. I can write it all down Write a hundred words for you I would say it all wrong Like I always see Now, one of the things I get asked a lot, Uncle Fluff, they, they say, uh, what documents do I need when I am cruising out of the U.S.? Well, that's a great question, my friend. And typically, it's a good idea to have a passport. But if you don't have a passport and you are a U.S. citizen, it's okay. Because if it's a closed-loop cruise, then what you can do is you can actually carry your certified birth certificate. Now, I'm not talking to one you got from the hospital that's got your footy feet print on it. I'm talking about an actual certified birth certificate and a state-issued driver's license or photo ID. The only exception to this is Cuba. And this cruise that we're talking about today, going out of uh, New Orleans, they are not going to Cuba, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you are going to Cuba, you're going to need a visa, which the cruise line can help with, and you definitely need a passport because, you know, it's a communist country. So, that being said, uh, one of the next questions we got here is, Uncle Fluff, uh, what drinks can I take on a Carnival cruise ship? Well, that's a great question, Joni. Uh, the Carnival Cruise Lines allow a small quantity of non-alcoholic beverages. Now, these beverages can be a 12-pack, unsealed, I mean, sealed and unopened, um, and they can be in cartons of 12 and they can't be more than 12 ounces each. So, uh, and you have to carry these in your carry-on. There's no plastic or glass allowed. Sparkling water, sodas, energy drinks, juice, and milk are the only beverages they will allow you to bring on the ship. Now, that is per person. So, if you're going with a family of four, that's a 12-pack each. So, you can get your soda pop. You can get you some juices. Um, you, can get, uh, you can get some milk, which would probably be pretty nasty by the time you stand in line unless it's in a cooler, and we'll talk about coolers here in a minute. Now, Carnival's rules say uh, you are prohibited from bringing alcoholic beverages on board with the following exception. At the beginning of the cruise, now that's the day you get on the ship for the very first time, you are allowed, if you're 21 years of age, of age and older, you may bring one 750 milliliter bottle the, of sealed, unopened wine or champagne, and that is per person. So if you and your wife are going, y'all both can carry you two bottles of champagne, or you can carry some wine, uh, your choice. So uh, that is what's going to happen. Now, if you bring, bring your own corkscrew, I would recommend you doing that. And um, that way, when you're in the room, you can drink in your room, and uh, you can open it up, and it doesn't cost you anything different. But if you want to drink it at dinner, or in one of the specialty restaurants or somewhere else, they will charge you a $15 corkage fee. So, again, that 750 milliliter, that's a standard bottle of wine or champagne that you can take with you on a cruise. Bring your corkscrew. So, any beverages, regardless of what they are, the champagne, the wine, the sodas, the juice, the milk, whatever, any beverages must be in your carry-on luggage. They can't be in your check luggage to go on. You've got to carry them on the ship with you and hold on to them until you're able to get in your room. Now, um, also, when you go to the ports of call, like on this particular ship that, that we're talking about, the Carnival Valor, we'll be going to Mexico. Uh, if you buy some tequila in Cozumel, you cannot take those drinks back to your room. You will have to check that, in for, check that liquor in and uh, grab it. They'll give it back to you when you are leaving the ship to go home. Now, how do you transport these things? Well, you can put them in a backpack when you're getting on the ship, or you can actually take a cooler with you as part of your carry-on luggage. And they need to be personal size, meaning that they can be no larger than 12 by 12 by 12. And that's the purpose for, of housing small quantities of non-alcoholic beverages and or medications. You know, you can put you if you've got medications required that you keep them cold, you can put them in there on your carry on luggage. Now, somebody asked me and I've been asked about this. What's this pre I'm a first time cruiser, Uncle uh, Uncle Fluff. What, what's the deal with these prepaid gratuities? 
Well, since everybody who works on a cruise ship, including your cabin steward, your maids, uh, kitchen staff, uh, wait staff, everybody, most of their money comes from tips. So you're in highly encouraged to, to tip. As a matter of fact, if you don't, at the end of your cruise, if you don't do, if you don't prepay your gratuities before you get on the on the trip, you uh they will you will have on you will have a bill that comes to you the day before last day of the cruise or the day of the last day of the cruise last full day, <clears throat> and uh, on that bill will be uh, gratuities for everybody in your cabin. So be sure uh, do, do like your uncle Fluff does. And do some prepaid gratuities. So it, it, it also on that bill that you get to include things like alcohol if you didn't pre-buy a drink package, um, spa visits if you go to a spa or you get your hair cut on the ship, uh, if you get excursions through Carnival, um, that'll be on there, stuff like that. So um, just just be mindful of that. And But, you know, there's ways to pay for a lot of that stuff before you ever, ever get on the ship. But let me stop right there. If you want a spa date, I'd wait till you get on the ship because a lot of times they'll offer deals for excursion days because those are slow days in that spa and they want to make some money. So I would wait to buy that until you get on the ship. Now, if you get your bill at the end of the week and you, there's something on there you don't like, especially on the gratuity side of things, you can go down to the main desk on the ship and you can say, hey, look, I, I didn't get good service, um, so I want to diminish this or you can even go in and say hey, you know i was given great service i want to i want to increase my my gr gratuities one thing i do is i always carry some cash and if somebody's doing a really good job i you know a lot of times first day i slip my cabin steward 20 bucks just right off the bat because you know he's going to take care of you he's going to make sure your room's clean got plenty of towels and stuff like that bartender you know what uncle fluff gonna slide him a little bit of money and when he orders that first drink because we want to be on a first-name basis with that man. Bartender's an important man in your life, especially on a ship.